Hello everyone, welcome to another mail call segment. We have quite a few packages to open. We have seeds from two companies, Rare Seeds, Baker Creek Rare Seeds, and Botanical Interests to open. And then um, we have this box here from Frog's Eye Wasabi. So uh, we're gonna open this one first, and then we'll look at what seeds we get, and then I'll give some commentary about the seeds. And then we'll talk real quickly about this third box here, or the first, fourth box. Um, it's Friday, so cars are going behind me. I hope the mic's not picking it up. This box is from the Frog Eyes Wasabi, a farm out in Oregon, and they specialize in wasabi plants for culinary as well as um, planting. They, they got onto YouTube and saw my channel and saw the wasabi project that I'm working on um, and that one I'm not doing very scientifically so it's kind of going but they, they really like what's happening and um, they sent over this box as a gift so there are wasabi plants in here let's see what we have they normally send it in a temperature sensitive packaging wasabi plants they like to be cool so they have this cool pack and oh wow this is wow this is awesome wow thank you very much you guys this this is a whole bag of wasabi check it out let me give it closer this is this is amazing we're gonna be wow I'm super ecstatic because um, I'm growing some yuzu and I'm growing some togarashi and I want to make a Japanese condiment called yuzu koshu and also I wanted to make some sushi and I thought it'd be awesome if we had some wasabi to harvest and also have wasabi from our garden and I was gonna harvest one of those but look at all these starts we're, we're gonna be able to use one of these for for making some fresh wasabi so I hope the second camera is picking this up. This is the first time I'm having a two camera setups. But this is super amazing. Thank you so much for this. Check it out. These are some really sizable plants. So thank you so much for these wasabi starts. We're going to plant these and then we're definitely going to use some of these for eating. All right. So yeah, be, be sure to look out for a video I hope I be, I'm able to, to get around to making a video where we make our own yuzu kushu and make some sushi um, I think it's called nagari is when you have uh, fresh fish on rice and one of my favorite types of sushi is sea bream and it uses yuzu kushu so this is this is really awesome okay let's let's put these away and oh Check it out. There is a wasabi grater down here. So I won't, I won't need to run out and get a wasabi grater. Wow, this is really awesome. Wow. Very cool. All right, I think, I think we'll be making some, some wasabi and some yuzu kushu together. So hopefully we can do that soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break off and run back in and throw these in the refrigerator real quick. So if you get plants from the frog eye store and you don't get around to planting them uh, they recommend that you put it in the refrigerator until you can get a chance to since it's kind of warm these days I'm gonna run in there and put it put it in the fridge real quick so we got our wasabi in the fridge and um, yeah I just want to say again how awesome the gardening community is uh, from viewers to fellow gardeners to um, neighbors later I'll show you a plant that I received from a neighbor who I met through this channel. And normally I'm very careful about meeting people um, online and also especially having them come over and um, visiting my garden. So um, when he came over and took a tour of my garden, he brought over this plant and I'm really grateful for it. Um, but uh, in case you're, you're wondering, I, I have a very, uh, strict vetting process so 
basically my mom called his mom and made sure that uh, he can come over and play. So, so that's how I bet. So, um, but and they, the cool thing is, is he lives right across the hill from from where we are, just like over there on the other side. Just that's that's really crazy how small the world can be sometimes. Um, so let's let's carry on and open our boxes. And this is our order from Botanical Interests. And once again, um, I'll just mention what we ordered and then we'll give the commentary afterward. Thank you seeds. These are lettuce. We're gonna have a lot of flowers. Two packs of these purple alyssum. Some lupin. And then this uh, black Velvet nasturtium. This is new to the botanical interest catalog. The black swan poppy. So we're trying to grow this one again. The oriental poppy. A black prince snapdragon. This is also new to the botanical interest catalog. This is, I don't know how to pronounce this, U T R E. CHT blue, so Utrecht blue wheat. Some cowpeas, this is California black eye number five. And some Zebrun shallot, these are French heirloom shallots. Okay, we'll set that aside. Let's open our rare seeds order. So this is going to be an order consisting of corn, mostly corn. I enjoy growing corn for fun. So here we have, um, this is the, I can't even pronounce this. This is Kai, Kaiua Chupai, Chusapai, Kaiua Chusapai. Some um, Oxa Chan Green. It's a green dent corn. This is this is a very um, special seed. Let me see which one it is. Okay. Well, this this is a special one, I think. The Cayua Chusapai is a special one, and this is the Peruvian. Uh, chill pie. We have some black turtle beans. And then this is a free gift. This is carrot. These are cos cosmic purple. I think we'll sell this in the uh, container that we just plucked the carrots from. I was going to put some Kuroda carrots in there, but I think we'll put these in. Okay. Um, this is a product that I'm testing out. We have a lot of mosquitoes here in Southern California. There, uh, over the last couple of years, we have the Asian tiger mosquito. And um, it's been a real nuisance. What's special about the Asian tiger mosquito is uh, in two regards. One, unlike mosquitoes in the past, the Asian tiger mosquito comes out during the daytime. So gardening means um, getting bit up by them. And two, they're pretty stealthy. The way they fly, they fly different directions. And you can see them, if you catch them in your sight, they'll just disappear in, in a second's time. They're very, very interesting. Um, so I would get bit up pretty, pretty good. The silver lining is unlike uh, what I call normal or native mosquitoes. It's um, when you get bit by them, when I get bit by an Asian tiger mosquito, it's like being like a bandage that, pull, that you uh, quickly pull you get it's really annoying but then it goes away after maybe two hours two three hours whereas the native mosquitoes it's not as annoying or it's not as um itchy but it lingers like for a day or two so i guess pick your poison i looked into different types of mosquito repellent and i'm trying to find one that's economical where you're not having to buy um 
what's what are called replaceable so you're not having to buy like oils or you know, or more candles and stuff so this one I'm gonna test out and if it works um, there'll be a video on it and if it doesn't work um, there won't be a video I, I I dislike putting videos of things that don't work because what may not work for me may work for others so if it works out you'll see a video about this product okay so those are the things that we received in the mail over the last couple of days and if you're interested in the commentary for the seeds that we purchased um, I guess we'll start them now for for the for the front yard um, or as far as gardening goals um, making the front yard a little bit more appealing has been probably the third item that we're working through the first was to make the backyard look better by taking things out of the container and kind of decluttering it. So now we're working on the front yard where we incorporate lands uh, edible landscape. We have edible things in there, um, planted very organically so that it doesn't look like it's rows of stuff. So, um, so it's right now a little bit disheveled, if that's the right word to use. Um, so we're, we're getting lots of uh, flowers to plant out there. So we have things like the lupin that that um, the lupin, the alyssum, the the poppies. So the oriental poppies. I'm just figuring out how to grow them. So we're gonna hopefully get a poppy next year and then be able to save save the seeds and regrow um, these varieties. So we have the Hungarian is it no Lawrence grape that we got growing. And we have seeds that we've saved from that, so we're not buying the Lawrence grape. So hopefully next year, these, these two varieties that were mentioned will grow for us and we can save the seeds. And then as far as uh, snapdragons, I like the flowers. And um, even better, they have a black or dark ver version of it. So looking forward to plant this out. This wheat is pretty cool. I, I, I like plants that are blue. So it's supposed to stay blue even as it cures and dries. We'll see how it grows. Hopefully, um, definitely growing it for ornamental reasons. Cowpea, I really enjoy cowpeas, um, both to grow and to eat. I had a lot of trouble with the purple ones. So, and then um, the California Black Eye Number Five is an heirloom variety that I've been eyeing for the longest time. I've been wanting to grow it, and being in California, I gravitate towards varieties that are that were developed here since um, they're more likely to do well. So that's why we have this. And the, um, let's see, also the nasturtium, the black dark color, I'm drawn to that. Let's see. And then the last thing is the Zebrun shallot. I've been for the longest time holding off on getting more seeds, thinking that the plant that I have that is in the backyard will eventually make or would already have gone to seed and hasn't. So. It may be another season before it makes seeds. So I finally bit the bullet and decided to get seeds and so we can have more shallots in the garden. As far as um, the order from rare seeds, uh, corn is something that I enjoy growing. And this year I was able to grow uh, a few more varieties and the uh, corn update is forthcoming. So hopefully we get around to providing an update on how those are growing. The green dent corn, as I like to call it, is something that looks very interesting and I hope to grow it next year. Um, maybe even try it this year too since it says it's, I'm reading the tag here that it grows at higher latitudes so maybe we'll try growing it later this year. Um, black turtle beans, beans in general are really healthy for you and, the, um, and black beans are very versatile in a lot of uh, dishes. Uh, I put them in soup and such. I've all, I'm always drawn to growing varieties that I know the name of. So um, this is this is good to have. This, I know for sure that this is a black turtle bean. In the past, the black beans have grown from the supermarket black beans. And uh, as far as taste, I think they're all the same. But as far as having um, knowing what they are, I think that's nice. So kind of bit the bullet and got seeds for it. And then um, these Peruvian corn. Um, here's a mosquito that's on my face right now. Um, <clears throat> I wish I had a, wish I had a power out here. I'd plug this baby in and test it out. Um, 
So Peruvian corn, one of the things that I'm drawn to is just different cultures. And if I had the ability to travel, um, it, it would be something I would do. So in lieu of that, I like to go out to some of the cultural or ethnic restaurants and try different cuisines. And, um, and then sometimes I get to take the plants here and grow it and experience it for myself. So I've had Peruvian food for the longest time and recently at a new Peruvian restaurant, they serve this thing, the, um, this uh, appetizer, which is basically a combination of popcorn and corn nuts. It was really, really enjoyable. And they had these really interesting Peruvian corn kernels. They're long and, and um, spiky. The, the store was really, the restaurant was really busy and I, I didn't uh, work up the, the nerve to ask them to have a handful of uncooked corn. So I was able to track down that variety. And since they're growing, these, since these are grown in the Peruvian or the Andes where that latitude is at higher uh, elevation, the weather's cooler and all that stuff. So hopefully we can grow some during the fall. So these are just kind of a, we'll see what we get kind of deal. So hopefully we can do a series on, on that too. And let me open this one really quick. This is, this is a very interesting um, corn and in, and the supply of this corn is very limited. So this pack has only 12 corn seeds and um, it, I don't think it's a proven, proven variety yet. So if we can grow this, it'll be really interesting to report back to the gardening community. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna sow these later in the year, but I wanna show you how interesting they look. They're, they're not only big, but they got this really nice variegated um, pattern on them. So hopefully we can grow some back later this year. So that's, that's this corn. Let me, um, let me put this back and I'll show you the other Peruvian corn. Oh no, we dropped one. We don't wanna lose that one. So this is the, this is the one that they make that, um, I got so excited I ran out here without looking up the pronunciation of that um, popcorn. So I'll have to put the name on the screen for you. Um, without the spelling, I, I won't be able to pronounce it because I don't remember what it's called. So let me open this up and show you what the kernels look like. This is actually flatter than the uh, corn that I had at the restaurant. And I guess um, since we're doing unboxing, I almost forgot about this thing. We'll just quickly unbox this and in the spirit of unboxing and show you the contents and hopefully it works and is not snake oil. Can never be sure about online reviews these days. Cause and I hope I don't forget to show you the plant that um, our visitor brought. So got lots going on these days is kind of get for forgetful <laughs> so um, in theory this thing works because by by emitting carbon dioxide it emits carbon dioxide and then it also has a UV light in here um, and what it does is it it emits the carbon dioxide the plants the um, the mosquitoes or bugs go into this they get sucked down here and um, they basically get trapped in here until you take them out. So this is this is the lock position. Oh, it's got a it's got a screw um, to keep it in place. So in the interest of time, I won't unscrew it and open it. Okay. So um, so since I'm some, since I'm here, I'll, I'll just sign off, and then afterwards, I'll show you the plant that. Uh, my uh, neighbor, new friend, and fellow gardener brought over the other day. And uh, once again, he lived right on the other side of the hill over here. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I think this is gonna be probably a longer video. So 
thanks for your interest as always for especially during these longer videos um, I try to keep them short these days but um, I'm kind of old school and I believe that uh, context is kind of important so hopefully when I give context is good and interesting um, for you so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video so where this Taraco orange is um, sitting we're gonna plant this sapodilla that we received as a gift it's a alano variety I guess and then the Taraco orange we're gonna plant right here and add more trees to our uh, permaculture resort garden.